Hello, hello, it's Brooke Sydney here, your favorite mindset and manifestation coach. I teach you how to reprogram your mind so you can make miracles manifest. I'm so excited to be back with you back in the US. For those that have been following me for a minute, you know that I manifested an amazing Mexican vacation for my birthday bash. But today we are going back to some fundamentals. I feel like fundamentals right now is gonna be really good and we're gonna talk all about states and how you can manifest into a better state or use your state to manifest, however you wanna look at it. But before I get into the low down nitty gritty of states, um, there are two ways to work with me. Both ways are listed below, as well as two communities of like-minded individuals that are on this amazing manifestation, mindset, and personal development journey. Because if you've been with me for a minute, you know that I believe that manifestation is not magic. We do make miracles, but it's all based in science and mindset and personal development and often tools that we've been using all along. So today I wanna to talk about this concept that Neville Goddard talks about under law of assumption called states, because some people are confused between states, what they are, how to get in and out of them, what's the difference between states and thoughts. And so I wanted to just kind of give you all the primer based on how I understand it and how I use states to manifest. So first of all, to me, states is just another way of saying it is your group of beliefs. It is your attitude about something. It is like your collection of all of these thoughts and feelings, your state of consciousness, right? It is your state of consciousness. And oftentimes I believe that our states, if we actually can figure it out, which happens a lot of time in my one-on-one -on -one work with people, it really starts uncovering those deeper level beliefs, those states that you're walking around in all the time that are actually preventing you from manifesting. Let me give you an example. So many of us are trying to manifest an SP. And so we're doing the affirmations around, you know, I am chosen, I am loved, my specific person wants me, my specific person thinks about me all the time, my specific person can't wait to be with me. All of these great, amazing affirmations. Some of you still are going and doing things around, you know, imaginal acts and inner conversations related to getting your SP. I'm using SP, but we could really talk about anything. But, Usually what happens inside of our one-on-one -on -one coaching or email coaching or whatever, we start getting to the state level, the state of the consciousness. And what I mean by that is your collection of beliefs that are mixed in, twisted up with your thoughts and your feelings about whatever topic it is. So keeping in line with the specific person topic, if your state of consciousness is there are no good men out there, you are not aligned, your state of consciousness is not aligned with your affirmations or your imaginal inner and interacts. Like sometimes it takes us for these deep rooted things that we're having a lot of resistance in and that are not manifesting for us to actually get to the state of consciousness that's often holding us back. You could have in the same situation, a state of consciousness where you are, um, you, you feel that you do badly in love, that you have a poor, you know, love track record, that you, um, your collection of beliefs are like, you know, your dates always go poorly. Again, or you have an attitude that dating truly sucks or something like that. Like these beliefs are actually in conflict with the said thing that you're trying to manifest, this specific person. Or, you know, it's like this group of attitudes or beliefs. Give you, give you another example. Is that a lot of people, for whatever reason, they pick a political party. They don't usually pick the party because, you know, they like the sound of Democrat or Republican or whatever. They pick it because it aligns with their collection of beliefs, their attitudes and beliefs, their state of consciousness, theoretically, aligns with that group, that party, those culminations of beliefs and attitudes and so forth. That's the best way that I can say it. So there are times, especially if we don't have deeply entrenched beliefs. Oh, wait, I wanna give you one more before I forget. Another state of consciousness is also like anxiety, depression. These are often considered states. 
dominant state. So even though if you're trying to trying to like manifest, you know, a new job, but yet you also are always talking about the fact that like jobs suck or, you know, they're in contract to that state of consciousness, your group of beliefs or group of thoughts, the way you feel about something, you have to look at that especially if the thing is not manifesting in light of what you're manifesting. So oftentimes with my clients, if they're trying to manifest, you know, say a new job, we start looking at what is your state of belief about working? What is your state of consciousness around jobs? What has been your attitude, your deeper thoughts and feelings around working life and the jobs that you qualify for? Getting to the nitty gritty, because oftentimes, it is an underlying attitude, an underlying belief that once you flip that and you start affirming against that or you start developing a new way of seeing and being and thinking, you then switch states. You bring all the thoughts and feelings and your all of your attitudes into another state and then you're manifesting from that state and that is super powerful. To me, that's where a lot of the quantum shifts happen. I talked about it recently in another video about the one belief that you need to manifest your SP, which is about really releasing doubts and their powers and the negative thoughts and so forth. So check out that video. But basically what you do is you get, you kind of grab, you kind of lasso for all my Texas friends, you lasso a set of group of thoughts, beliefs, attitudes that kind of go together about that subject, about that topic, about the thing that you have a natural assumption about. I love it because if you do the self-reflection work, if you do the deep diving work, if you do that inner work, you start discovering what you really think and feel and believe in your attitudes. And that in essence is your state. And once you discover that truly deep belief that's holding you back, that's causing you resistance, that is in exact opposition, you know, or opposed to what you are trying to manifest, that's when you can quantum leap by flipping it, um, upgrading it, elevating and starting to think different and you shift your state. Imagine if you could shift your straight, your state from depressed to happy or even depressed to content or from anxious to calm. Like I'm a calm person. Like the same situation could happen to this to two different people. One depressed, one calm, one happy. Now you can imagine what they're able to manifest with those different states as well as their realities and the way that they view the world based on their states. So again, think of states as a culmination or a collection of attitudes and beliefs and as Abraham Hicks says it, and I think it's a really good way to think about it. Your, your beliefs are thoughts that you continue to think over time. It becomes your habitual way of thinking. It is your dominant state, your dominant thoughts that manifest. So if we can change our dominant states and our natural assumptions to be in line with what we're trying to manifest, that's when we can quantum leap into what we are trying to make manifest, what we are trying to create what we are aligned with and our intent aren't seeing in our 3D reality. I know this is helpful. That's my intention is to start clearing up some of these common concepts or law of assumption speak. Let me know if that cleared up states for you. If you have any more questions and let me know what state you're going to clear up in the comments below. Make sure you are subscribed that you turn on that bell so you know when my next video is and that you like this video to reach more people and I will see you tomorrow.